Hi guys, my name is Stian Bum and I'm an actor. I'm also your guide for the next year as part of Kiro Create Classroom. The idea behind this is to help you to understand, in a practical way, concepts about acting. So welcome to our first episode, working with an actual script to search for the clues that the writer gives us and to mark the text in terms of pause, tone, emphasis and thought processes so that you can perform the text like the pro that you are. And to help me do this, meet Tsulufelo, the queen. Hi guys, I'm Tulu. I studied drama at Stellenbosch University and I did my honors in physical theater. I've always known that I wanted to do drama since I was in school. So I joined the drama club and I took drama as a subject. One day, I will have my own company in the local community where artists and creators can come together to create theater and share stories. So, Stian, mm. I'm a bit nervous. What script are we doing today? We are doing a bit of Roald Dahl. Ooh, Roald Dahl, I love that. <laughs> if you're looking for really fun drama content, Roald Dahl is amazing. Anything by Roald Dahl. I see, you're still doing your cutting and pasting. Oh, yes. See, you... You place the script on the left-hand side, and then you keep the right-hand side open so that you can put on the research, notes, analysis, annotations. Stian, you can just give the script to me on my phone. <laughs> Do you want me to demote you from queen to princess? No, no there, there's something different that happens when you write down notes and, and when you have to, to learn the lines or, or go back to it. You know, there's something hap that happens in your brain. I've seen so many young students and young actors going into an audition room with their phone and it has never ever worked, not once. I know. Mm. Read. What do you mean? I've never seen this before. It's a cold read. Come on, you're an actor, read. Okay. Goldilocks and the Three Bears. This famous wicked little tale should never have been put on sale. It is a mystery to me why loving parents cannot see that this is actually a book about a brazen little crook. <laughs> ah, Stian! <laughs> I know that was bad. It was my first time seeing this. Yeah, oh, because you don't, you don't know anything about the script. Uh, so you then, have no, done no annotation. How do I make it relatively okay? Uh, okay. Yeah, how do I make it more interesting for the audience? Well, if I had to perform this, then where do you start? Analysis. Exactly. Text analysis is the tool that an actor uses to understand what the writer wants to say. What does Roald Dahl want to say with this poem? But today's video is not about text analysis. Tulu and I have already done the text analysis, so let's just quickly run through it. Okay, given circumstances. <laughs> yes. Uh, Stanislavski's questions. Uh, first question, who is speaking? The narrator. Yeah, but who's the narrator? Mrs. Bear. Okay. Uh, next question, when? When? Mm. Uh, well, there's no reference to time. Oh, there is. Roald Dahl, he published this, he published this poem in uh, 1982, I think. So the 80s then? Yes, exactly, the 80s. Okay. Next question. Where? Well, maybe Mrs. Bear mm. is sitting in her garden, relaxed, talking to her friend. Oh, that is very important to know. Mm -hmm. You need to know who you're speaking to because it determines the way in which you perform. When you speak to your mum, you speak differently to when you speak to a stranger or to a friend or a policeman. Next question, why? Why does she tell the story? Yes. Well, it's her objective, her needs and wants. She needs to tell the story of the real Goldilocks. <laughs> yes, every yeah. scene, every monologue, every poem or prose, there's a need or a want, an objective. You must go and find it and then let that influence the performance, emotionally and physically. But enough talk of analysis. After you've done the research and analysis, you start marking the script. Grammatically, there's rules when you use punctuation marks. And writers use them to clarify meaning. 
Exactly. When you talk, you can use pause, pitch, tone, emphasis, all those things to make what you want to say clear. And writers use punctuation marks to do that. And we should follow these, the writer's punctuation marks because it gives more clarity about the character that the writer had written down and what they want to say um, with, with a piece. Let's look at the poem from the beginning. Where is the punctuation marks? There's a full stop after sale. Well, that is the first sentence, yes. And even, even if there is a full stop, what you do is you go over the full stop. So that when you go over and you learn your lines or you do your notes, you know that is a definite, definite stop. Okay. Okay. All right. But what happens here also is we're working with verse. And a writer uses use a thing called the enjambment. And an enjambment is a continuation of a sentence or clause across a line break. And we indicate that with a little curved rainbow. Yeah, you see, look, you look here, up there, so it's a little curved rainbow. So just like this? Yes, exactly. So let's go to the next sentence and then we'll talk about pauses. Well, there's a full stop at crook. Yes. And there's an enchantment by book. Yes. And, and by C and me. Okay, cool. Now read it like that. It is a mystery to me why loving parents cannot see that this is actually a book about a brazen little crook. Okay. Listen quickly to me when I read it and I put a pause after each, each line. Okay. It is a mystery to me. My loving parents cannot see that this is actually a book about a brazen little crook. It's so bland. Mm. It has no meaning. Yes. Yes. A pause needs to be earned. You must fill it with truthful meaning, thought and intention. And my pauses had none of that. Give a pause after C. And then think in your head that thieving little brat. Try that quickly. Okay. It is a mystery to me why loving parents cannot see that this is actually a book about a brazen little crook. <laughs> yes, you see, now the pause has meaning. And we indicate that little intended thought pause with a weird, strange, deformed P. It's like a dash with a little tummy on top. So that comes by C. Yes, so you put it there, but now what you also do mm -hmm. is you go to the other side and you write, you make the key there and then you write what you're thinking, that thieving little thieving brat. Thieving little brat. Yes. One slash is a rest pause. It's a short pause with the same function as a full stop. We use it when we want to take a breath in front of a word to emphasize it or help us play with rhythm and verse. Two slashes are sense balls. Filled with thought, it enhances meaning, allows us to have a shorter thought process, react non-verbally, build suspense and serve as a crossing between verbal thoughts and ideas. Three slashes is a process pause. This is a long pause filled with a thought process. It is used for dramatic effect, to build suspense, to react non-verbally, and serves as a crossing between verbal thoughts and ideas. Thought processes also indicate space, the absence or the presence of a pause. Oh, pace. I struggled with that in the beginning. Phew. <laughs> I used to speak so fast, no one understood a word I was saying. <laughs> no, everybody does that in the beginning. Pace is faster or slower, but it is internal, an internal drive. Think of it in imagery. A, a slug moves slow, with a constant energy that moves them forward, while a high-speed train moves at a certain high speed towards its destination. The inner urge of the snail and the train is the same. It's the pace that differs. Once I finally grasped the concept, mm -hmm. I was able to automatically adjust to my inner drive. Therefore, my dialogue and my speech adjusted, adjusted accordingly. To ac accordingly. Let's go to the monologue version. This is a really good tip. When you work with a narrative poem, 
like this one, but you want to do it as a monologue, simply retype the poem in a monologue or a prose form, like this. Now, there's something called a hesitant pause. Okay, and, and, and that, it's a pause that's slightly hesitant, and it helps with meaning and clarity. So, no thought process, just hesitation. Yes. Okay. And you indicate it with an upside V, like this. It's got the same weight as a comma, but it can be used in the sentence to emphasize, for instance, the concept of loving parents. So and I you can, make a comment I can, about it. I yes. can put it here on yes. loving parents. Okay. I'll read it like that. It is a mystery to me why loving parents cannot see that this is actually a book about a brazen little crook. Yes, now the meaning is clear. And as well as the attitude. So you mark it in your script, and then you write, obviously, the reason for presentation next to it. Okay, but when I use pauses, it's normally to put more emphasis on the word, or if I'm an... I'm, if I'm unable to, you know, pronounce the word, I find that using pauses really helps. Yes, and we indicate stress or emphasis by underlining the word. So I'll naturally underline loving parents. Yes. Oh. Now read the first sentence, ne, and then you give a pause before, before never, and you underline or emphasize never. Okay, a pause before never. Mm-hmm. This famous wicked little tale should never have been put on sale. Do you hear the irritation that comes from the pause and, and the emphasis? Mm -hmm. I hear it. As you can see, there is a hesitant pause, pause. before wicked, wicked and wicked is emphasized. As a slight hesitation pause to stress the word wicked that indicates the feeling you have about the tale, you have a strong feeling about it, right? Then we put hesitant pauses before and um, after put on, stressing put on and sale, so the agitation of the situation comes over clearly. There's a, a sense pause after sale, before it, before the next line. Think the line in your head. You cannot understand the logic of people sometimes, that they are so blind. Then there's an exclamation mark after C that I've put in. And after C, it shows you the frustration. It is a stress and an exclamation. So it's, it's a lot of energy and you can elongate the E's like a, you know, C. And then there's commas that I've put after brazen, little, crook. And then you emphasize the three. Try that for me. This famous wicked little tale should never have been put on sale. It is a mystery to me why loving parents cannot see that this is actually a book about a brazen little crook. Okay, do the last sentence again. Uh, that is actually a book, and then you give equal weight to the to three, the three yeah? words. Okay. That this is actually a book about a brazen little crook. Do you get that? I get it. That's lovely. Now, let us change the given circumstances. So we are changing the narrator. <laughs> no, it's still Mrs. Bear speaking, but now she's not speaking to a friend, she's speaking to Mr. Bear. And Mr. Bear did something terrible. He actually went to a journalist and he sold the story Ooh. to them. Yes, and they twisted it. And now she is upset because he's not doing anything about it. People are staring at her. She's... She's agitated and angry, and she's now fed up, and she wants to give him a piece of her mind. So you work with a lot of emotion, anger, all right? So now, go to, let's go to a new version of the, of the monologue, if you turn the page. Now, let's try and annotate a little bit that first two with that, that given circumstances in mind. Okay, so right. she... She's in train mode and, you know, she's mad and she storms into the house and mm -hmm. she, he is just on the couch, mm -hmm. not caring a damn that, you know. And she's angry. And she's angry, so yes. he's about to get it. And the, what, the pace will be much quicker then, wouldn't it? Naturally. Okay. <laughs> okay, and the pitch? The pitch will be higher. Okay, so... 
I'll read the first line and, 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 and see how okay. I would annotate it. Mm -hmm. This famous wicked little tale should never have been put on sale. But I think, do you know what she needs to do? I think mm -hmm. you need to wait. I think what she does is she starts waiting and she waits for the answer and he doesn't answer. He just sighs, you know. So there's a, there's a thought process. There's this, this long pause. You can actually use a, a process pause there, waiting for an answer. She's not answering. So what, she's, what is she thinking? You know, she, she's, she loses it and then she shouts at him. It's a mystery to me. And she shouts at him and then, oh my goodness, I can't believe that I shouted that much. But you are a nice dad, but I'm irritated with you. And then he goes with a pace towards the end again. If you want to indicate pace, you make a bracket. From there, you make a bracket like this about a brazen little crook and you indicate it. With an increase. Yes. So now you know when you do it, oh, I need to, I need to follow through to the end of the the end of the sentence. Okay, let me try it. Okay, cool. This famous wicked little tale should never have been put on sale. Tis a mystery to me why loving parents cannot see that this is actually a book about a brazen little crook. Fantastic. Now, oh, Clara, let's see. annotate a slug version. This famous wicked little tale should never have been put on sale. But what about, what about the fact that if you go, you know, that, that tale that you were talking about. Should never yeah. have been put yeah. on sale. Eh? So you emphasize the tale, but you do it with, with an upward inflection. Okay. And what do you and do with the upward do inflection? Do you just do Indicate a little bow. Yes. So that, that wicked little tale. Yeah, mm. that one. That wicked little tail should mm. never have been put on sale. Exactly, but then should never have been put on sale. She, she gives the, you see that tail? It should never have been put on sale. And it's an accusation towards him. This famous wicked little tail mm. should never have been put on sale. It is a mystery to me why... <laughs> Why loving parents cannot see oh, I like this smirk. that this is actually a book about a brazen little crook. That's nice. You know, it's great that you smirk. It is a smirk. You see, now you can, after sale, you can put a pause mm -hmm. and you can actually put a, a, a process pause in there. You know, thinking again. How absolutely pathetic. You can start laughing after it's a mystery to me and then it can be an audible laugh. And out of the laughter, and this is a nice little trick, <laughs> after the laughter, it can go into emotion. There's a sense of defeat. You know, I can't believe that people don't actually think that this is a book about a, a, a brazen little crook. For emotion, we use a highlighter. A highlighter. Yes. Because that indicates in your brain when you see it, oh, I need to, I have, need to have an emotional state there. And we use something like a stimulus to get to the emotion. And I think the C you encircle, and that is the stimulus. This famous wicked little tale should never have been put on sale. It is a mystery to me why loving parents cannot see that this is actually a book about a brazen little crook. Cool. You see now you get all those little things in one. That's very well done, great. <laughs> okay, cool. So let's go back to the poem. You see how given circumstances actually changes the way you can annotate. And that's how you get a very interesting and a dynamic performance. But let's go okay. to now. Just imagine just how imagine. you'd feel if you had cooked a lovely meal. So the, pick, the pace picks up here. And she's listing all the things that she's making for breakfast. Now play with upwards inflection, downward inflection, and then also the swinging up and down and the swinging down and up. Okay. Okay. But you're absolutely right. There is a section break. How do you indicate a new section? With a line and an asterisk. 
So I'll do this. Yes. With a line mm. and an asterisk. If you're talking to your friend, I mean, imagine. just imagine how you'd feel if mm. you had to cook a lovely meal, delicious porridge, steaming hot, fresh coffee in the coffee pot. Is there enjambments there? Mm hmm. Is there pauses? There's naturally the commas. Yeah, oh, you see, but now that is not enjambments. So, but then what do, okay. There's a comma, so mm. the comma is not enjambments. Is it a pause then? Yes. You can put a, you can just put a normal sense pause in there. Mm. But just imagine how you'd feel. Hmm? Do you hear that upward swing? You'd feel. And that you indicate with a swing up and down. That goes across mm. both words. <laughs> now just imagine how you'd feel if you had cooked a lovely meal. My emphasis is on me. Okay, cool. But now there's also delicious porridge, steaming hot, fresh coffee in the coffee pot. So there's three sections. So there's two, three pauses and then the inflections. How would you do the inflection? Delicious I mean, you're, you're making porridge, it... steaming hot, fresh coffee in the coffee pot. I mean, she's, she's, luring the, she's luring the listener in with maybe toast. With maybe toast mm. and marmalade. Mm. Also emphasis. And the table beautifully, beautifully laid. One place for you and one for dad. Another and then there's affection. Do you get that? I get it. Mm. Read that quickly. Now just imagine how you'd feel if you had cooked a lovely meal. Delicious porridge, steaming hot, fresh coffee in the coffee pot. With maybe toast and marmalade, the table beautifully laid. One place for you and one for dad. Another for your little lad. Right. So what we have here is dad actually speaking. So there's a, there's a new character. And how would dad speak? Where would you put his tone? In a lower voice. Oh, right. so, so yes, yeah, so the resonance is here. Yeah. And, and he's speaking a bit slow yeah, because he's only guards the whole day. Yes, that's a good thing. But now when we have a new character and he needs to speak, what is very good to do is to put brackets there when he speaks. So that when you do, there's a difference between the narration and the character speaking. Okay. So there's a, a bracket, golly gosh, gee whiz, oh cribes, how hot his porridge is. Now, what happens there? There's, there's exclamation marks. So you need to actually just emphasize the exclamation marks with your pencil, or with your pencil as well. Because what happens? Well, his mouth is burning, exactly. so he's huffing and puffing. Exactly. And okay, cool. The whole time, yeah. yeah. He's Try quickly. Yeah. <sighs> oh, oh, golly gosh, gee okay. whiz. Oh, Christ, how hot this porridge is. Oh, fantastic. That's wonderful. But now you actually used your hands. And a wonderful thing to do is to actually use a hashtag to indicate action. Okay. So you just now put a hashtag there, indicate Waving hands. Now it carries on. Now let's take a walk along the street and, the, and it's dad speaking. So let's annotate that. Let's take a walk along the street so it's an enjoyment. So it's a new thought, is it not? Let's take a, oh, yeah. Does he have the thought of going to a walk before or while he's having this attack? I think <laughs> just after he, he has some puffs and pants, okay. he has this new thought. Okay, so I have intended thought pause mm -hmm. there. And what is he thinking? Maybe if he takes a walk, that he will cool down. Exactly. Okay. Cool. So he thinks that, and then he then he says it. On the street until it's cool enough to eat. Mm. And then the narrator speaks again. So there's a bracket there, and a bracket again. An early morning stroll, and it goes down to move. But you see, after stroll, there's an enjambment. An early morning stroll is good for people on the whole. And then there's a pause. It makes your appetite improve. It also helps your bowels to move. Hmm. So maybe there's a maybe there's a thought process before he start, talks. Maybe or maybe not. Maybe it's just yeah, the hesitation. The it's up to you. Is it good for people on the whole? It makes feel. Maybe a thought process. Mm -hmm. Of what? 
why he's taking a morning stroll, mm. you know, because it helps his whole appetite. Okay, cool. But let's do some inflections in uh, with with the words as well. Do the whole thing, and then we see where we put inflections. Then Dad cries. Oh, you guy, you gosh, do you eat? Oh, crabs, how hot this porridge is! Oh. Let's take a walk along the street until it's cool enough to eat. He adds, an early morning stroll is good for people on the whole. It makes your appetite improve. It also helps your bowels to move. <laughs> okay, cool. But uh, just remember with the brackets, you need to try and put a slight pause slight before pause. you, otherwise the distinction between the narration no, and the character is not strong enough. Okay. Okay. So then you just need to indicate the movement of your in inflections as well. When is it upward? When is it swinging? Etc. Okay. Let's carry on to the next one. We have a new section. No, you don't have a new section because she's just carrying on from where he, he she's actually making comments about what he did there. So I think it's just a new thought. Okay. And that we do well, there's a shift, so that we do... Just a normal asterisk. Yes, with a normal asterisk. It, to, to indicate a shift. Okay? No proper wife would dare question such a sensible suggestion. Above all, not at breakfast time, when men are seldom at their prime. Okay, cool. So there is now actually a pace increase because it's different from Mr. Bear that had the slow, so you need to indicate, oh, there's a pace increase because the narrator is, is now speaking. And she actually wants to tell the person, oh, wait, wait, wait. So there's a bit of an urgency there. No proper wife would dare to question. So dare is definitely um, emphasized. And uh, there's the enjambment of the question, such a sensible suggestion. She's making a mockery of him, actually. You know, so sensible, there might be a slight hesitant pause and sensible definitely stressed. Mm -hmm. So just to, before we continue, just to clarify a bit why we have the pace increase mm -hmm. is less to do with her speaking faster, but going back into the narration voice, whereas before she intentionally slowed down for Mr. Bear. Yes, but also she's making commentary about Mr. Bear saying he needs to go for a walk because he needs his bowels to move. And she can't say, no, we can't. So she says, no, it's, a, you know, it's, it's very sensible to, to say, you know, okay. let's go for a walk. And, you know, he's, he's the father. And there's, I think there's a slight pause after suggestion because of, this, because of the comma that's naturally there. Above all, not at breakfast, breakfast time. time. So exactly. Another pause there. And an but put a, put a hesitation between off before seldom and a hesitation before prime. Because now she's really making a mockery out of him. You know, when men are seldom at their prime. It's like two girls talking. It's like, you know. Try it. No proper wife would dare to question such a sensible suggestion. Above all, not at breakfast time, when men are seldom at their prime. Okay. <laughs> Let's do it from the beginning. With annotation. Yes. Goldilocks and the Three Bears. This famous wicked little tale should never have been put on sale. It is a mystery to me why loving parents cannot see that this is actually a book about a brazen little crook. Had I the chance, I wouldn't fail to clap young Goldilocks in jail. Now just imagine how you'd feel if you had cooked a lovely meal, delicious porridge, steaming hot, fresh coffee in the coffee pot with maybe toast and marmalade, the table beautifully laid. One place for you, one place for dad, another for your little lad. Then dad cries, golly gosh, gee whiz, oh cripes, how hot this porridge is. Let's take a walk along the street until it's cool enough to eat. He adds, an early morning stroll is good for people on the whole, 
It makes your appetite improve. It also helps your balls to move. No proper wife would dare to question such a sensible suggestion. Above all, not at breakfast time, when men are seldom at their pride. No sooner are you down the road than Goldilocks, that little toad. Thank you, that was fantastic. So what you need to do next is to find the poem on the internet and play with it, the annotation like Tzulu and I did, and see how it affects your acting. To help you, we're going to send you this system of annotation or marking your script. Think of it as the Stianslavski annotation system. Stianslavski. I like that. <laughs> That's a good Stianslavski. one. Stianslavski. So that you can use that to inform your monologue for your academic work, for straight to camera, and for CAS monologues and poems. Because annotation is one of the tools that makes you feel secure as an actor. And once the annotation and analysis become part of your performance, part of your pathway in the brain, to unlock great acting, then you get a performance like this. Remember, the only way to become a pro at annotation is to do it again and again. And again and again. And again and again. And again and again. And again and again.